I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome students, families, teachers, faculty, and administrators. My name is Jenna Lewis, and I'm happy to celebrate all of the eighth grade students with you. The 2020 graduating class at South Scranton Intermediate has faced many challenges over the past three years. However, these circumstances made us the people we are today. Even when times were tough, together we persevered and came out stronger. Looking back, September of 2017 seems like it was a lifetime ago. In those days, we were all nervous about opening our lockers and getting to class in time. Now, these thoughts don't even cross our minds. Very quickly, we became comfortable with our surroundings and soon established ourselves in a new school. This fall, heading into high school, I'm sure some of these ideas will soon reappear. Once again, we'll be the youngest in our building. Thoughts of fitting in and finding our place will fill our heads for years to come. Our time in high school will not be easy, but I'm positive that our previous experiences will help us in our futures. As we proceed on the path of becoming better students and people, we look to our past for guidance. All the way back in April of 2018, we received what at the time was the shock of our lives. We were informed of the news that all the students at SSIS would no longer be attending the same high school. Families were stunned and never saw this coming. Their children wouldn't be able to reside at the same high school as their older siblings once did. We all wondered about our newly found friendships and what would become of them. Thankfully, we live in an age of technology where we could still keep in touch. Even so, would it be the same? One question was on everyone's mind though, what would happen to all the students currently at West or Scranton High? As answers were accepted, we began to face reality. This is going to happen, whether we liked it or not and we were the ones responsible for making the best out of a difficult situation. It was our choice to enjoy the time we had and to take advantage of all that South had to offer us. This was the first of many challenges throughout our time in middle school, yet we persisted and were determined to get through it. Fast forward approximately two years later, just this past January, right in the middle of our eighth grade year, I threw another curveball in our direction. After finding asbestos at Northeast Intermediate, about half of their 900 students would be joining us at our school. At first, we couldn't imagine this many people were being added to our building. It seemed as though it was impossible and it would never work. South was already crowded on its own. We we're all comfortable with our current situation and such a big change was definitely scary. Envisioning what it would be like was hard and all we could do was wait. I remember the day the Northeast students arrived here at South. Everyone was nervous for their own reasons. Selfishly, we worried about the extra people in the hallways and the crowded lunchrooms, while they worried about finding their way in a new school and all the many unknowns. On top of that, we were rival schools, but we embraced our competitors and made them feel welcome. It wasn't always an easy thing to do, and I was proud of each and every person for accepting the circumstances and doing their part in making the transition as smooth as possible. Before we knew it, it seemed as though they'd gone to school with us forever. Finally, it was all about us. In just a few months, school would ease up and be filled with field trips and graduation celebrations. Eventually, state testing would conclude 
and we would be enjoying the last few moments with one another. It would have been the highlight of our time at South, and none of us were prepared for what happened next. This last hardship we faced to class is something that is still on everyone's mind. As the coronavirus spread throughout the U.S., we wondered how it would affect us. But I don't think any of us could have pictured this outcome. We always just assumed we'd get to go white water rafting and experience Hershey Park. We took the thought of our upcoming graduation and dance for granted. We never believed that it could all just be taken away from us. I'm sure many of you, myself included, didn't take this seriously at first. We all expected to be back in school within two weeks, but we were wrong. In April, we learned that we'd finished the school year online and it all felt very final. Unlike other years, we wouldn't get to say goodbye to our teachers, school, and friends. That was it. Shortly after online school began, there was something new we had to navigate. This was a trial that everyone was unsure of how to react. I want to thank all of our teachers, not only for being patient with us during these times, but for educating us throughout the years. I'm certain that it wasn't always an easy task and their dedication is commendable. They truly must love their jobs to put up with all they do. And I appreciate all the time and commitment they show daily. I also want to acknowledge our families as they constantly supported us. Whether they went to sports events or encouraged us when we needed it, I think we can say we admire all they've done. Hopefully, we'll be able to physically attend high school in the fall. I know this year has been a roller coaster of ups and downs, but we will overcome whatever these next few months bring. Our class is resilient. We've withstood so much in our lives, and if we could get through all we have, then we can get through absolutely anything. So congratulations, class of 2020. You have so much to be proud of. Hello and welcome everyone to the Gilroy House and in my very unusual speech for the graduating class of 2020. I hope this message reaches all of you safe and healthy. Flexibility is defined as the quality of bending easily without breaking, the willingness to change or compromise. As a class, you are all perfect examples of this definition. To say this year has been strange and unusual is an understatement. As a group, your flexibility was on full display when with little notice, you made room for 400 new students halfway through the school year. You welcomed these students with open arms and you showed from the first day that your home at South will now be their new home for Northeast. You changed the way you ate your lunch. You changed the ways you went to class. You adjusted to crowded halls and still continue to strive. Then March 13th hit and we all went home. As true Spartans, you continued to adapt. You joined your Zoom meetings and your Google classrooms. And like always, you did everything that was expected of you. I am unsure of what our future holds for all of us. We are certainly in trying times. But one thing I do know, no matter what our future holds, the Spartans of South Scranton will rise up and meet any challenge that faces them. To the class of 2020, I will never forget our strange trip we had this school year. Continue to be the driving force of change and compromise, and never forget, you will always be a Spartan. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mr. McCormick, and I'm the yearbook moderator for South Scranton Intermediate. Today, I'm here to recognize those eighth grade students that uh, this, wait, you're recording right now. I thought this was a practice run. Can you give me like one minute? 30 seconds? Okay. Two. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm here to recognize those eighth grade students that volunteered their time during the school year, both in school and online, to the creation of the 2019-2020 yearbook. While this school year has not gone according to any of our plans, many of them have continued to work on creating something that is an accurate representation of our time. Their commitment and work ethic enabled us to create a full year of memories for their fellow students. 
I would like to thank the staff for the effort they put in before, during, and after school. And I would especially like to thank the editor and co-editors for the daily work they put forth. A special thanks to business manager, Caitlin Getz, activities editor, Delilah Jones, photography editor, Carly Colombo, editor of writing, Jade Lewis, co-editors, Reese Havener and Jenna Lewis, and editor, Alexandra King. Thank you for your time, and I hope you are all staying healthy and safe. Please look for an email regarding the purchasing of a yearbook in the near future. The Spartan Voices, our school's newspaper. In its monthly edition, students write stories to express their ideas and recap the school news. Every autumn, I am faced with the decision of choosing editors to handle the day-to-day -day business that a newsroom requires. This year presented some challenges since I only had two returning members. So I presented the idea to the staff. Where did they fit into the dynamic of the newspaper? The positions filled quickly, and luckily the students took them very seriously and produced a really quality paper this year. In addition, we did so many things beyond the paper. We helped Northeast. We provided supplies for all the different classrooms in the building. We were really a force this year for the school, and the kids deserve a lot of credit for that. So I would like to recognize them right now. Our leadership team consisted of some outstanding staff members, mostly because Britton told them to be there. The boys showed up all the time, Connor Budney and Matt Harity. Thank you so much for being there every day, before school, after school, lunchtime. If Britton told you, you guys showed, and I appreciated it. Nico D'Olivera was our publicity editor. Rehan Wibowo was our photography editor. Gavin and Ferguson and Delilah Jones handled everything that related to business, and Britton Banal and Javon James were our editors-in-chief. Without them, there would not have been a newspaper and many other things around our school. I'm so proud of them. It was an amazing year, and I appreciate all of you. Congratulations. Literary Magazine is a creative writing club. Students come every Wednesday morning, and we share poetry and short stories that they've written or enjoyed, and we just support each other in the writing process. It really is an amazing group, and I just had a great bunch of girls this year that I need to recognize. There were four editors who kept the magazine and the Google Doc going and made it all look pretty. They are Zarina Berzate, Kira Brogan, McKenna Green, and Kylie Woodard. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention our outstanding staff writer, Jocelyn Vinciclera. Congratulations, ladies. I loved our Wednesday mornings. I'm going to miss you greatly. Good evening. The school staff award is given each year by the faculty and staff of South Scranton Intermediate School to students who consistently put forth great effort and work to their full potential. Today, we are here to honor those students who make our jobs easier. These students attend school day in and day out. They consistently exhibit a positive attitude, are prepared to work, and are always willing to lend a hand. At this time, it is my honor to recognize six students from the class of 2020. Naraya Jackson, Anthony Perna, Leland Speck, Haley Fedrick, Evelyn Montezuma, and Maria Largo. Thank you and congratulations. This is Mrs. Navis, and I want to congratulate all of the eighth grade students for a great job that you did this past school year and I hope everybody um, is looking forward to a good summer. I am announcing the winner of the Spartan Council Award for this year and the Spartan Council is a group of students who do some very important work for the school trying to make it the best place that it can be for everyone, the students, the faculty, and the administration. Also, this year's Spartan Council took on the responsibilities of the Save Promise Club, and that meant doing our best to make all of the students feel included and feel safe. So from my kitchen here in Dallas, I just want to say congratulations to the winner of this year's Spartan Council Award, Fernanda Sanchez. Congratulations, Fernanda. Each year, the English Language Development Award is given to students who manage to achieve academic success while also growing and developing their English language abilities. This is certainly not an easy task, 
and it requires a great amount of perseverance and hard work. Each year, I find myself more and more impressed by the dedication that the winners of this award put towards becoming successful. This year is certainly no exception to that. The winners of this year's English Language Development Award are Christy Magar and Eliam Manan Alcantara. Congratulations. I'm Mrs. D'Antona, and I'm here with Ms. Miller to present the awards for PJS. The Pennsylvania Junior Academy of Science, or PJS, is a statewide organization of junior and senior high school students designed to stimulate and promote interest in science and mathematics among its members through the development of research projects and investigations. Over 6,000 students across the state of Pennsylvania compete each year in their respective regions for the opportunity to compete at the state level competition, with only those earning first award being eligible. Unfortunately, due to the current COVID-19 pandemic, the 2020 state level competition was not held. The Board of Directors in each region, with the help of judging recommendations, review all of the state eligible projects and selects the top project in each of the 16 categories to receive an excellency award. Four of the 2020 participants earned this type of award. Students receiving this acknowledgement today have shown excellence in this organization, which have helped us to earn the 2020 Small School Award where 93% of our students would have moved on to the state level competition, the highest average amongst all participating small schools. Here are the awards. For our 2019 Regional Second Award recipient, Jenna Lewis. The 2020 Regional First Award recipient and was eligible for the 2020 state level competition, Alyssa Holt. 2020 Regional First Award recipient and was eligible for 2020 state level competition, Julie Nicasio. The 2019 Regional First Award and State Level First Award recipient and 2020 Regional First Award recipient and was eligible for the 2020 state level competition, Emma Grippa. 2019 Regional Second Award recipient, 2020 Regional First Award recipient with a perfect score while also earning the Junior High Excellence Award in Ecology and was eligible for the 2020 state level competition, Jade Lewis. 2019 Regional First Award and State Level First Award recipient. 2020 Regional First Award recipient while also earning the Junior High Excellence Award in Botany and was eligible for the 2020 state level competition, Alex King. 2019 Regional First Award with a perfect score and a state level first award recipient, 2020 regional first award recipient with a perfect score, while also earning the Junior High Excellence Award in Behavior Psychology, and was eligible for the 2020 state level competition, Britton Banal. Last but not least, the 2019 regional first award with a perfect score and state level first award with another perfect score, and the 2020 Regional First Award recipient with a perfect score while also earning the Junior High Excellence Award in Engineering and was eligible for the 2020 state level competition, Jocelyn Vinciquera. Great job, everyone. Good afternoon, graduates. We present the Outstanding Artist Award to show recognition to students who shine in the visual art category. Considered for this award, these students eagerly participate every day and produced finished projects that exude quality and craftsmanship. They needed to demonstrate a high level of skill, interest, and aptitude all three years while in my art class. My chosen students have delivered these requirements. One worked in my room every free moment she had, and the other showed me new artwork at the end of the day, nearly every day for all three. I'm certain my choices will hone their skills to do something great in the field. I am proud to present this year's Outstanding Artist Award to Isaiah Wright and Liz Mary Camacho. Congratulations. Hi, I'm Ed Roach, industrial arts teacher here at South Scranton Intermediate School. The Francis McAndrew Award is given each year for excellence in the life arts classes. Mr. McAndrew, an industrial arts teacher, was a member of the first faculty of South Scranton Junior High School until his retirement 40 years later in 1977. He was an outstanding educator devoted to the success of his students. I couldn't be more proud of this year's winners. These students always lived up to their potential and to Mr. McAndrew's high standards. They always had a kind word to say in the hall. They always offered to help in the classroom. And they always treated teachers and other students with respect. 
it has been a joy and an absolute privilege to teach these students. The winners of this year's Francis McAndrew Award are Isabella Fay and Leland Speck. Great work, guys. Congratulations. This year's Music Award is presented to a very deserving eighth grade student. This student excelled in every aspect of the music curriculum, whether it was playing a band or string instrument, singing in chorus class, or our online music classes in the fourth quarter. It is my pleasure to present the South Scranton Intermediate School Music Award to Angelica Venus. Congratulations, Angelica. Hello, it's me, Mr. Reed. Sorry I can't be there in person. I, w I do wish you all the best of luck. This virus really did pop out of nowhere and it really has put a chip on my shoulder and I don't like it. So, I'm gonna give the awards out for the Physical Education Award. The Physical Education Award is presented to the outstanding student who has excelled in physical education. These winners exemplify skill, enthusiasm, cooperation, leadership, and engagement of uh, movement and skill. He or she has demonstrated a willingness to assist others in physical education class and role models for others. The winners of the 2019-2020 Physical Education Award goes to Brianna Martinez, Javon James, Adrian Johns, and Kaina Aviles. Thank you. Hey everyone. The Spartan Athlete Awards are presented to two students who embrace their competitive spirits through school sports at South Scranton Intermediate School. They strive to do their best in the classroom while also pushing themselves to achieve excellence on the field, track, or court. These students also embrace the tenets of sportsmanship and recognize the importance of setting a positive example for those around them. It is my pleasure to announce the 2020 Spartan Athlete Awards to A couple of students in the eighth grade, Connor Ondek and Isabella Fay. Congratulations. I am proud to say that this year's Social Studies Award goes to Elian Manan. Congratulations. Good afternoon. The Annette Lobo Science Award is given to a student who demonstrates scholarship, integrity, a strong work ethic, respect for faculty and fellow students, a desire to learn, and a willingness to help and work with classmates, all while maintaining a grade point average above 95. This year's recipient of the Annette Lobo Science Award is Carly Colombo. The Reading Award is presented to a student who has exemplified the joy of reading throughout the school year. This student's enthusiasm for learning and dedication to hard work has been unsurpassed. It's my distinct pleasure to name Britton Bonal this year's recipient of the Reading Award. Congratulations. Hello, everyone. As you know, my name is Adam McCormick. I'm one of the eighth grade math teachers at South Scranton Intermediate School. Today, it is my privilege to present the Frank Marinucci Award in Mathematics to a deserving eighth grade student. This award is presented to a student who embodies the same characteristics Mr. Marinucci exemplified in his teaching career at South Scranton Intermediate School. The recipient of this award must have a desire to learn and understand math to its core, must strive to do his or her very best on every assignment, and must recognize that mathematics is one of the cornerstones of success in today's society. The recipient of this year's award has embodied each of these characteristics and many more throughout this school year. This winner showed these characteristics while we were in school and has continued to show them as our learning circumstances have changed over the past several months. It is my honor to present the 2020 Frank Marinucci Award in Mathematics to Ms. Jenna Lewis. Tom Coyne taught sixth grade English and coached basketball at South for over 30 years. He had this amazing ability to keep students engaged with his sense of humor and his kind heart. I feel very fortunate to have worked with Tom for several years. The English Award at South Scranton Intermediate School was renamed the Thomas Coyne Award in his honor. It is bestowed upon a student who shows talent in both writing and in grammar. This year, it is my great pleasure to bestow the 2020 Thomas Coyne English Award to Miss Emma Grippo. Congratulations, kiddo, you got it. Some of us were fortunate enough to know our former guidance counselor, Meg Hart. She was on the surface a no-nonsense woman. 
someone who could organize and get things done. But underneath that surface, there was a heart of gold. She helped so many students in so many ways that her name really became synonymous with giving and helping. It is in her honor that we developed the Meg Hart Award. It is an award that is given to two students who exemplify those very characteristics. It is my true pleasure to bestow the 2020 Meg Hart Award to Britton Banal and Fernanda Sanchez. Congratulations, guys, you've really earned it. The students selected for the Spartan Award are leaders demonstrating outstanding academic performances as well as school spirit. These students were positively involved in many facets of both school and community. It is my pleasure to announce the recipients of the 2020 Spartan Awards to Delilah Jones and Javon James. The Principal's Award is given to two students who best embody the qualities of former South Scranton Intermediate principals. These students have demonstrated academic superiority, good citizenship, leadership qualities, and high morality. It is my pleasure to announce the recipients of the 2020 Principals Award to Jenna Lewis and Alex King. 